Hey everybody, it's Chris Bumbray here again. I'm looking a little bit more tired today because it's the last day here at CinemaCon, but uh, I attended two amazing panels, one for Paramount Pictures and one for Walt Disney. Uh, and I'm gonna give you some thoughts on, on some of the footage that I saw. So let's start with Paramount. The biggest movie I think that everybody's gonna be talking about, of course, is the Smurfs movie. No, I'm joking. We did see an updated cast list, which includes Kurt Russell voicing a Smurf. That's, to me, that seems strange, but hey, I mean, you know, Grandpa Smurf, maybe? I don't know. Poor shit! Anyway, Gladiator 2. Let's start with Gladiator 2, shall we? So, they basically sent in a video introduction from Ridley Scott, Denzel Washington, Paul Mescal, Connie Nielsen, Pedro Pascal, um, that set up what we saw, which was basically an extended five minute trailer of the film with unfinished VFX, I have to add. Um, it looked for the most part pretty polished, but they said that it wasn't really done yet. So if you've been keeping up with the news on Gladiator 2 here on JoeBlow.com, you'll know that the budget for this movie is insane. It's like somewhere in the $300 million ish range. But Ridley Scott has promised that this is going to be even more epic and even more spectacular than the first movie. And I mean, Looking at the trailer, it definitely looks like there's more action in some ways. Like, it's it's more epic in scale. I mean, I think the first Gladiator, of course, wasn't epic, but I think also the budget from the, at the time was kind of limited because it was seen as a risk. People hadn't really done these kind of Roman Gladiator epics in quite a while. So a lot of it were these kind of one-on-one -on -one fights in the arena, which I loved and I think was probably the best part of the movie. And it looks like the sequel is more, you know, battles and spectacular type stuff, which I like, but I don't like it as much as seeing one guy fight another guy with swords. But there is some of that too in the trailer. So Paul Mescal plays Lucius, who's, you know, uh, Connie Nielsen's character's son, uh, inspired heavily by Russell Crowe's Maximus. And he's now looks exactly like Russell Crowe in the first movie with his beard and he's all built up and stuff. And he's a gladiator who's fighting for Denzel Washington, his character who's his trainer. Uh, and they go to the games of Rome and they're fighting in really sadistic games this time, even more sadistic than the last movie where, you know, they had to fight tigers, but here there's like hungry baboons, a rhino. Um, it just looks it just looks completely insane with the emperor being this, this madman tyrant played by um, Joseph Quinn. Um, so Pedro Pascal, from what I gather, is another Roman senator or general who is kind of opposed to the emperor, right? And is more of a, you know, a new Rome kind of kind of guy. And at some point in the movie, Pedro Pascal and and, and uh, Paul Mescal's character are going to fight in the ring, and that looks like it's going to be an amazing fight sequence. Um, it looks savage, right? Uh, I didn't see Denzel Washington doing any action, uh, but um, maybe that's not really the kind of role he has. It definitely looks really over the top and, and really awesome in that kind of Ridley Scott classic way. Is it going to be as good as the first Gladiator? I mean, it's hard to say. The thing that makes me nervous, honestly, is that it doesn't seem like Hans Zimmer is coming back to do the score. I think it's Harry Gregson Williams, who I really like, but those, those, that music in the first Gladiator to me was like a good chunk of the film, of what made the film as good as it was. So I'm reserving judgment. I honestly hope that Gladiator 2 is a masterpiece. I'd, I'd love nothing more. Um, we'll see. Uh, other than that, I saw some footage from A Quiet Place Day One, uh, which you can hear being talked about a little bit more on the horror channel, but you know, suffice to say it looks really bigger in scope than the other Quiet Place movies because it's it's uh, it's set in New York, right? Um, our, our guy Lance, who's also doing it on the who's also doing these videos on the horror channel, said it looks like the aliens of the franchise, and I, I really think he's right. Lupita Nyong'o, Joseph Quinn look like really kind of heroic, likable leads. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Saw a little bit of um, If. John Krasinski's new movie, which, you know, looks like a big animated family adventure film uh, with Ryan Reynolds and invisible friends. And, you know, I don't know. It's not, it's not for me, to be honest. I'm, I'm actually hoping that the movie surprises me and it turns out to be wonderful. But I don't know. I think I'm a little bit cynical for that kind of thing these days. The other big one that they were really hyping up is Transformers 1, which has Chris Hemsworth voicing Optimus Prime, Brian Tyree Henry voicing Megatron, uh, Scarlett Johansson doing a voice, and Keegan-Michael Key as Bumblebee. Now, this looks like they're trying very much to do something similar to what they did with the last Ninja Turtles movie in terms of animation, that kind of, you know, really hip, cutting edge animation style, which I really like, and I, I think it looks cool. I think the, the, they showed us like a five minute sequence in 3D, and it was, it was pretty spectacular to look at visually. One thing, it's so heavy on comedy, which 
you know, I mean, the Transformers movies have never been super serious, right? But it's like Transformers kicking jo cracking jokes and cracking wise, and especially King and Michael Key as Bumblebee. Like, it really almost seems more like Kung Fu Panda to us at a certain point, just because it's so comedic. But I would imagine that the movie's gonna be darker than those trailers make it look, especially with Brian Tyree Henry and Chris Hemsworth come out on stage, and they said it's all about what turns Megatron and Optimus Prime from being brothers in arms to mortal enemies. And that could actually be a very interesting story. They also announced a whole bunch of movies, just bang, 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 one after another. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Last Ronin, which is going to be R-rated. Um, they announced that Glenn Powell is going to be the lead in Edgar Wright's The Running Man, which sounds to me like really cool casting. Um, Damien Chazelle is coming back with a movie, even though Babylon made like $3. They're, they're really kind of doubling down on him, and which is great because I actually think that he's a great director. One that I'm very intrigued by, though, is Star Trek Origins, because nobody's really said anything about this one yet. Toby Haynes, who did um, Black, a bunch of episodes of Black Mirror, is going to be directing, and it's going to be written by Seth Graham Smith, the writer of Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Um, it's apparently taking place long before the first Star Trek movie, the, 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 the rebooted franchise, I mean. So I don't think Kirk's going to be in it. I don't think Spock's going to be in it. Well, like I said, it's origin, maybe, you know, the origin of the Federation or something like that. It sounds like Chris Pine's definitely not going to be in it, though. So we'll have to wait and see. But as a Star Trek fan, I'd love to see more Star Trek on the big screen. Um, but yeah, that was it for the Paramount panel. So now let's talk about the Disney panel. Um, Kevin Feige from the MCU came out and revealed a little bit of interesting information. Fantastic Four and Thunderbolts, which is actually now called Thunderbolts with an asterisk at the end, are both being shot for IMAX screens, which was good news for the exhibitors that were there because IMAX movies have been doing really, really well lately. And the Marvel movies haven't been doing as well as they once were. But, you know, it really seems like he's trying to change people's opinions on, you know, where Marvel's franchise is going. So one thing they said was kind of interesting was that Marvel is experimenting with making all different sizes of movies for different parts in the calendar. And he showed some footage from Captain America Brave New World. And I have to say, he said that one of the movies that people like the most in the MCU is definitely Captain America The Winter Soldier. And this is their attempt to make something in that vein. So he showed us some footage and promised that this is going to be a more grounded Marvel movie. And to me, that seemed to be that it's going to be a more modest in scale Marvel movie, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It looks like there's a lot of good old fashioned action, hand to hand stuff. Um, the scene that we saw, basically Sam Anthony Mackie Falcon goes to the White House where he meets General Thunderbolt Ross, who's now the president and doesn't have a mustache anymore. And of course, is played by Harrison Ford. So there's a big action sequence where a bunch of sleeper agents, including Carl Lumley's Isaiah from Falcon and Winter Soldier, uh, try to take out the president and you know Sam the Falcon has to fight them off. And it's a really cool scene that's very Winter Soldier-ish. Hard to say, you know, how good it's gonna be or, or how not good it's gonna be. I mean, it doesn't have the same action design that Winter Soldier had because that had the Russo brothers and they were really on to something with that movie. It, it'll, it remains to be seen if Brave New World can match up to that, but it does look cool, I, I have to say. Um, and then, of course, we saw 12 minutes of footage from Deadpool and Wolverine. So they didn't want to show us anything super spoilery. So it was mostly co comedic stuff that we saw where, you know, Wade now is working as a used car salesman and tries to sell a family a shitty Kia. Um, if anybody wasn't sure that this would be R-rated, uh, don't worry, it's very R-rated. And it's full, full, full of nonstop jokes about how this is Disney and the MCU's first R-rated movie. There's, I mean, there's even a pegging joke. And <laughs> this is a lot of stuff about cocaine. Um, it, it definitely looks quite racy. Um, and then they do kind of set up the main plot where uh, the TVA agents, read by um, Matthew McFadden's Paradox, kidnap Wade and send him on a mission into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, already, though, there's a huge cameo from one of the current Marvel stars that I'm not going to spoil here that I'm pretty shocked that they gave away, but it's pretty cool. I mean, I think people are going to love this movie. It's hardcore already. It looks like Sean Levy, the director, really nails the tone. Um, I'm, I'm definitely excited to see it. I really think it might be like one of the biggest box office hits of the year. I think that people have been waiting for this movie to happen, and it should be pretty cool. Another one I got to talk about, Alien Romulus. 
So they showed us a really cool sequence of the movie where uh, Kaylee Spaney's character, uh, who basically is one of a, a crew of salvagers that are all pretty young in their early 20s, are trapped in a room with a bunch of face huggers kind of coming out of their beakers and are being chased around. It, it looks really cool. It looks very alien style, like the original alien, like, like Ridley Scott style, um, more so than James Cameron style, in my opinion. And it kind of climaxes with a chest burster sequence, which is very unique uh, compared to what we've seen before because they have this cool x-ray machine and you can see it kind of like under the rib cage coming out and it's so graphic and it's so bloody. I mean, I think Fidi Alvarez really set out to make a horror movie as opposed to an action movie. I mean, there is action in it, but it definitely seems more horror than, than, um, than you know, very much more in the mold of, of Ridley Scott than James Cameron, in my opinion. Uh, and I think that's going to be good. I mean, the production design is really cool. Um, the acting looks great. Kelly Spenny looks like she's terrific in it. She's really good in Civil War, which is out right now, and you should definitely go see it. Um, didn't get much of a read on the rest of the cast because it was an action sequence and it was kind of, or a thriller sequence anyway, and it was just kind of a lot of scared acting, right? And I, But I think that, you know... It's not a teen version of the Alien franchise, though. I think that's what people were kind of afraid of when they heard that it was about a young cast and the premise of the film. People thought it would be like Scream meets Alien, and it's not. It's really classic Alien-style film, and I think it's going to be great. All right, so the last one I want to talk about is Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. I'm a massive Planet of the Apes fan, going all the way back to the original movies, even through the TV show with Roddy McDowell to the Matt Reeves movies with Andy Serkis as, as, as Caesar. Um, so this one takes place several generations after War of the Planet of the Apes and is about kind of uh, the, how the apes have evolved over the centuries. Now they can, they've can they developed the capacity to talk, albeit haltingly, at least for the chimpanzees. They still use sign language to a certain extent, but you know mostly communicate orally. Um, so in this, chimpanzees and gorillas are at war. Gorillas are more war-driven. War and uh, the lead character, Owen Teague, is a young chimpanzee. His village is invaded by a gorilla army. His father is killed and his mother and his friends were all taken as slaves. And he, you know, has the classic hero's journey where he's going to go rescue them. The footage that we saw, he's befriended by an orangutan uh, who becomes kind of his mentor and teaches him to fight. And then uh, he also is, is, he rescues at some point a human girl played by Frey Allen from uh, The Witcher. And I mean, it just looks like a grand adventure. Um, I mean, I think Wes Ball is going to nail it. The effects for the apes look even better than they did last time. The fur, the wind. Um, I love all the Planet of the Apes movies. You know, it's funny. I've never seen a Planet of the Apes movie that I didn't like. So this one for me is kind of high on my list of, of, of movies that I want to see. In addition to that, you know, we saw little clips from, from some cool stuff. Uh, there's a movie coming out called The Amateur with uh, Rami Malek about this kind of techie for the CIA whose wife is killed in the terrorist attack. And he blackmails the CIA into training him to be an assassin so that he can kill everybody that was involved with her death. Um, John Bernthal's in it with Rami Malek uh, and uh, Lawrence Fishburne. And it looks like a cool kind of grounded thriller, like a 90s thriller, which I like a lot. And I like Rami Malek. And I've said before that I think as far as action movies go, they really have to kind of bring along a new generation and they shouldn't all look like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So I kind of like a guy like Rami Malek getting a shot. Um, you know, it was a pretty good panel and it was a pretty good cinema con in general. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of the highlights from the festival for me, and I think, you know, Gladiator 2 is definitely one that is going to stick with me. I'm not sure at all how the movie's going to come out, but it was very memorable, the footage that I saw. Deadpool and Wolverine, I'm very excited for it now. Joker 2, of course. Um, so, you know, it was it was overall, I think it was a great year, uh, and I, I, I can't wait to come back again next year, and I really hope you've enjoyed these video wrap-ups. So let me know in the comments if you did. Thank you.